Welcome to part three of the tilting tower. Today we're going to look at the actual rigging for the tilt mechanism. We'll also look at the cable entrance and some of the grounding. We'll start off by lowering the falling derrick. So I just walked the derrick down off of the tower. It was stored just up along the side of the tower. Brought it down. See how it's connected. There we go. Okay, okay so I'm about set up and ready to go. You can see uh, the truck with the winch. First pulley, second pulley, that gives me my double line pull. And uh, adjustable chain here, and that's just so I can size it and pick up the slack on the main line that's going to the falling derrick. There's, there's nothing under tension right now. It's just so it's safe to just kind of walk around. There's nothing. Um, so you can see how this is all attached into the bucket. Um, some people ask why I didn't use the, it may be hard to tell in the video, but I kind of have a, I, I could, couldn't get a good place where I could pull with that. And I found, you'll see, even when you're pulling the antenna, it tends to lift the front wheels off the ground. What I should have done is dug a large, what I would like to do is dig a large base in here, just pour a big ball, like a big slab of concrete down into the ground and put an attachment point on it so that I could simply run a line down with a pulley and then pull from whichever direction I would want to go. So that's one thing I didn't, uh, I didn't do. I should have done. But uh, there's different lines here holding everything. I'm trying to keep the geometry so that everything is pulling relatively in line with the falling derrick. You can see the positioning of the, of the pulley so that everything stays nice and straight. And uh, everything's tied back so that all of the forces are all equally, are all opposed uh, so that everything stays kind of steady. Kind of a network of grounding you can see how the the various how the grounding is done different points on the tower and then the leaves that head off under the ground and there's a whole grounding mesh network here that I put uh, again I'm not an expert I just did the best I could with the materials that I happen to have available and uh, the tower grounded and then uh, I'm going to show you there's details of a grounding bus bar there for all the various ground attachment points. And of course, you can probably see up on the cables right there, all of the um, grounding um, cables for each each one of the individual antenna runs that goes to the ground bus bar. This is just some slack in my antenna leads. For a total of five, I tend to use, uh, this is all LM, LMR 400, the Ultraflex. I just like the Ultraflex because it bends nice. And it goes up onto a, a waterfall onto my cable tray. And there's another waterfall. Waterfall is that little item here. It's, in this case, it's made of plastic. And that's just to protect the wires so that they don't get uh, damaged. There are a total of four bolts that hold the base uh, of the antenna tower to the tilting base. Right now I'm just going to be removing these so that I can, in preparation for actually tilting the tower over. I leave the last bolt in the hole until uh, the very last moment when I'm ready to tilt the tower over. In order to start the tower tilting, I have to just give it a nudge with a little bit of slack in the main falling derrick line. So I introduced a little bit of slack and now I'm just using another cable to just slightly pull the tower off center so that I can uh, then lower it with the winch. It may be hard to tell, but I'm just lowering off center, so it'll be just hanging off of the slack that's in the cable. Now I'm going to go back to do the final lowering. And we'll lower this. You can all see. Yeah. 
security. It's good, it's moving the Kubota a little bit, but that's okay. See all of that, and the beam is slowly rotating. Comes down here, and getting closer. You can see how the the beam is rotating because it's on a hinged plate. You'll notice that on my antenna, if you look carefully, I have a five element six meter beam. The elements on the bottom side towards the ground are a little too long for me to drop the tower all the way to the bottom. So I have to, at this stage, kind of stop the process, go there and just unscrew the clamps that are holding those elements so that I can retract them and then be able to drop the antenna to its final bottom position like you see now. I just didn't show it in this video. So, there, we're down, ten is resting, just going to lower a little bit, there, there, things good. So that's how it's done. Now I'm going to do that maintenance I wanted to do, I could take a peek here. It looked shinier three years ago when I went up, but um, one thing I did do is everything was painted with the trim clad clear, and that trim clad clear is really good stuff. So, oh wow, look at this! I was wondering where, wondering where all those wasps were coming from. And uh, again, trim clad clear. Look how everything it everything looks brand new. Everything is just looking great. There's the hinge, all working well. Those are the two end stops on the hinge pin that I describe. Um, and uh, there's the Yesu top bearing, which is a really nice beefy bearing. Um, everything is looking very good. And I mean, this was my dream to be able to work on my stuff while I'm down on the ground. Well, not down on the ground, but the ground level, I should say. You don't want to end up down on the ground when you're working on your antennas. So there we go. And uh, this is a, an Explorer 14. Uh, this is a, uh, oh my gosh, I forget. I think it's a Comet. But uh, that's a, a six meter, five element. This is a 13B2. You're, again, uh, that's a Cushcroft, I believe. Yeah, or, no, Cushcroft, yeah, I think so, 13B2. Uh, two meter, uh, 13 element. And um, a GP6 uh, for my two meter. And uh, here is a, uh, it's an Alpha Delta. It's going to be hard to see. It's running down here. You can see the trap. And it's just mounted to the side. Uh, it's a DXA, which is a, a sloper. And it's uh, designed for uh, my um, 160, 80, and 40. And it's designed to go under a, um, a beam. So this might be of interest to some. When you have a tilting antenna, uh, this particular design needs guy wires holding up that long 40 meter element. And I, I just basically, this, th when this is up, this pulley will be at the center of where the guy wires are. So this was how I solved the issue, of, because if you tied them permanently there, um, they don't, uh, you have a problem when this thing flips up. Uh, that one ends up being too, um, this one ends up being too short, so you can't. So anyhow, the pulley, as it, as it rotates, the, uh, that whole, that guy wire will find its own center. That's why that's there. What I've just noticed is that uh, my wire antenna has gotten caught in one of the elements of 
the beam. So I'm just walking over to uh, move that wire antenna off of that element so that I can continue the lift. That little piece of antenna that you're seeing on the ground is not part of the actual beam. It was just a spare piece that I was stealing a hose clamp from when I was doing my maintenance. So don't worry, all the parts went back up. Okay, there's that little antenna stuck. And we're gonna do a Now I'm just hoping that the big problem has always been that little rope. Because I just replaced it and I was trying to play with the length of it. So if we get really lucky it'll be right the first time. I'm talking about the little guy wire rope that I was showing you that goes around that pulley. As I lift the tower, it sometimes has been problematic as it tends to get caught up in some of the various clamps that are in other areas on the antenna. Hopefully you can see all that. It's essentially how it comes up. And the view from the back. My little cable for the 40 meter element is at the right place, so... It's going to be a little bump as the tower comes Take a look. Put the lock pin in. Okay. Now we're safe. I want to take a look at it from a different angle. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual cable entrance. So you can see all the cables riding up in the trough. And let's go. So there you go. So over here we have a surge suppression network for the router, or the router, rotor control cabling. So that comes from the rotor onto this terminal strip here to the surge suppressors inside that box. There's a my main ground plate mounted in the box and it's grounded heading back out to my main grounding grid. You can see here I have these are the uh, the polyphase um, lightning suppressors uh, which are connected to each of the five antennas. I have five antennas up on the tower as I showed you. Um, and that's it, my main ground plate, and then this is the, my shack ground. That goes right onto a grounding bus bar. Uh, this one right here. It goes to a grounding bus bar that's uh, just in behind my radios up on the shack, up in the shack. Thanks again for watching this video. I'll leave you now with some beautiful pictures of the fall colors here in Metcalf, Ontario, Canada in October of 2020. Also, just a little cautionary note that if you decide to attempt a project like this, I'd highly recommend you get some qualified or professional advice to help you with some of the various mechanical details for a project such as this. Thanks again for watching. 73.